Water is the lifeblood of your homestead. And it is pretty much top priority. Without water, we're done. Today, I'm gonna talk about some water systems, specifically water systems for getting water to your animals, to your gardens, and uh, sometimes to the pasture. Hey you guys, good morning. This is Josh with Homesteading Family. I wanna pick up on the conversation that we were having a couple weeks ago. I did a video, if you haven't seen it, you might wanna check it out, we'll link to it below. We talked a little bit about water, I guess quite a bit of water in there. I got a lot of response, you guys had a lot of questions and a lot of thoughts about a water system, so I wanted to dive into that a little bit because you guys asked some great questions about wanting a little more details about the poly pipe and getting uh, water out to the field and about chicken waters freezing and water hoses freezing, all great questions. So let's take a few minutes today and just dive into water systems a little bit. There's no one perfect water system. You've got to figure out what your needs are and what your resources are, but there are some ways to think about. And so hopefully what I share today here will give you some good ideas or systems that you can mimic or take off from and that help out. Cause we sure have done it the hard way a lot of years. And at times, like I was mentioning before, been slow to build systems that while there was a little bit of upfront cost, saved a lot of time and labor, uh, which is really, really important in this life that we're living, especially with the reality that I know many of you are, you know, working another job off the farm and you've got to make the most of your time. It's worth setting those systems up. It's worth lowering the steps. I talk to my guy, my boys all the time, even when they're moving a hose. Hey, think about how many steps you're taking. All these things help make it more doable, which helps make it easier and more enjoyable. But before I jump in, uh, I wanted to also say thank you for all of your wishes and prayers for Carolyn. She's doing well, needing to just rest a lot, um, but she thanks you. We're just so thankful for all of your guys' support and encouragement and prayers. So thanks a bunch for that, and uh, let's talk water. Water is a huge topic. I want to talk a little bit about getting water to animals and getting water to your gardens and other areas on your property and a few different systems. And that starts with the water you have. Where do you get your water? Is it coming from a well? Is it coming from a municipal source? Is it coming from the rain? Hopefully you have uh, water collection systems if you've got a well. Uh, hopefully you have water storage systems and that's what i want to get to without getting into the weeds too much is that wherever you're getting your water storage is extremely important and i'm standing you know in front of our pump house which is actually our cistern but you need storage no matter what your system is if we're going to start just thinking about a water plan we want storage and we want to capture water we've got water coming out of the ground it goes into ponds so we have storage there and then for a lot of the household use, it comes into a cistern. If you're in a low water area where you don't have a lot of water and it's dry, that storage becomes even more important as does catchment, like rain catchment. I'm not gonna go into rain catchment too far, but do you guys know that for every square foot of roof space you have, you can collect about two thirds of a gallon of water per square foot of uh, roof space. So on a thousand, a thousand square foot of roof, you can catch about, you know, 600 and it's about like 625 gallons. I don't remember the exact numbers, but point is, is think about your systems, where water's coming from. What we have here at Riverbend is actually a system that's been here for 70 years and we had to try to improve on it without going into these wetlands behind me. So up behind me, there's a hill up there. Uh, we've got a good spring. It's wonderful. I'm not going to hike up there today. Um, but the old, old water pipe, one inch, which just isn't near enough for everything we're doing here. It was kind of good for two to three people in a house. Comes down here. I did not want to dig all that up and mess with that. This is a nice wetland. It would have been expensive. It would have damaged uh, a lot. As a matter of fact, I just wonder how they even got the line in to begin with. So what we did was came and met it, found the water source, dug it up, and put in a catchment system because we freeze 
we needed it underground so that it doesn't freeze. If you're not in a freezing place, you could store your water above ground. I'm, I'm essentially on a concrete tank right here and I've got 2,500 gallons of storage and then we've got a pump in it down there <laughs> and water gravity flows into there and then it pumps out to the different places on the property. We also have a go around if electricity goes out there's a gravity feed that we can bypass this system and it will gravity feed water to the house and we could do some light, not highly pressurized uh, water. We could get water to the animals and uh, garden, you know, if we had to, if we had a long-term power issue with that gravity feed. So gravity is another huge, huge issue. Another, another thing to explore depending on your situation. Stepping in to the barn for a second. Hey, Lane, how you doing this morning? Good. Lane's getting the chickens fed. Right, good job, buddy. One of the things you guys were asking me with the various water systems is how do we get water to the animals in the winter? These freeze-proof bibs are very, very important to have water flowing in the winter time and not freeze. This goes down uh, about three feet into the ground. You can get them anywhere from two to like five or six feet down in the ground, depending on your freezing lines. Really, really important. We could survive without them. We have where we've strung hoses out from a, you know, a fixture that came off the house that didn't freeze. Every day we'd line hoses out, get them to the different watering troughs and animals, and then drain the hoses, put them back in. This right here, is very, very helpful. And we have these in multiple places in the property. And in fact, this is how we get water in the barn right now. We still have to take hoses. We need a few more in winter time when we're in the barn and we've got animals back there in different places. We water with the hose and uh, shut this off. We drain the hose and that works really well. And we've just got to do that a couple times a week. Eventually we'll improve on this and maybe get some water lines that are for the winter that are self-draining. Um, so there's always something you can do to improve, but this is really, really key to uh, having water in the winter time because the water, what it does is it drains when you shut it off here, okay? Get a valve right here, you lift this, it opens, you lift it all the way. It's got a plunger, goes way down to the bottom. And when you close it, it drains the water out of the pipe way down in the ground. There's a little gravel pit way down in there, several feet and that drains the water out of this pipe. And then all you have to do is drain the water out of the hose, which we just string it along, takes a couple minutes. And the, the other side is you guys were asking, a couple of people were asking about our chickens and our sheep and everything. They're not out in pasture uh, during the winter time. We have snow on the ground, uh, a solid four months, a lot of times five, sometimes a little bit longer. By November, Certainly by early December, they have to come back and they have to come to the barn. Chickens as well, they, they live in the coop. The meat chickens live in the freezer and uh, egg layers are here in the coop along with the dairy cow and the sheep and pigs and everybody else, they're here in the barn. And so we water from here from a riser like this. So we're not dealing with the water issues out there in the field as far as freezing. And several of you were really concerned about that. And yeah, that would be a real problem, but we don't have pasture, it's buried in snow. The other side of that is there's a, you know, there's a hanging chicken water in here. We've got troughs right here all along in the different stalls of the barn. And um, we do have to keep heaters in there, or we've got to bust out the water with a, a hammer and an ax or saw or something. And uh, we've done, <laughs> We've done a lot of that without a barn to make it work. You know, you do what you've got to do. If you can get a water heater to a central location, they've got just submersibles and ones that float and everything, that uh, keeps your water from freezing, keeps the animals in water and makes less work for you. That's winter time. We have to spend a lot of time right here at the barn and we're constantly building systems here to try, try to make it more efficient. But that leads me to the next thought, which is what you guys really asked about, and that is the black poly pipe that we used uh, this year. Wish I would have done this so, so long ago to get water out to where the animals are because we don't want the animals concentrated all year long, all the time. That degrades the land, you get a lot of manure piling up, so you don't want to do that when you don't have to. I'm gonna make a quick stop right here though because you were asked, somebody was asking 
about uh, the water source. Uh, we actually have two ways we can get water out there. Right here, if you can see this, this is water coming up from the spring and coming through. And you see this pipe right here. We laid this pipe above ground and tied it in. And I've got a valve right here. And this is just gravity. We can go a couple different ways with this and distribute water by gravity out to the field in the area that I'm gonna show you or other places. Now, we don't have a ton of gravity, so it works, it just depends on what we're trying to do. So we also have the pasture polypipe system set up right now because it's a new system. We just got it set up to a hose, to one of those risers I was showing you uh, because we've often got several things going on at once and the gravity feed just isn't quite doing it here. So we, we can do both and, and it's nice to have redundancy. That's another thing in systems on the homestead, just a general principle. Uh, whenever you can create redundancy and have a system that works optimal for you day to day, that makes your life, you know, function and easier and getting things done and being efficient. But then a backup like this gravity flow, if you do have some problems, you've got some redundancy in your system and something that works, even if it's not optimal, but it keeps you going. Um, I, I think that is really, really important in all the different things and systems that we do on the homestead is having that redundancy. Redundancy creates resiliency. I like that, I just made that up. You guys like that? Redundancy helps create resiliency. Okay, let's go look at that poly system. You can see here this black pipe is just running across the ground this is coming over from the area that i showed you you know right now this is on a semi-permanent basis which means we've gotten it going i can tie it into a couple systems it isn't dug in for permanency and it, it's nice to go slow this is another thing with systems some things you can do right away and do permanent but where you can take time think about a system apply it and then have some room for adjustment before you make everything like bomb proof permanent it really i found saves you some trouble we're running this poly on the ground my goal would be to get it under the ground eventually to deal with some of those freezing issues and to keep it from deteriorating but right now it's headed out and i want to point out the gate and i want to point out the board very very important we have to drive out here occasionally and this is a pretty tough pipe but i don't want to wreck it so the board is there, the pipe's supposed to be a little bit closer, the board a little bit closer to the pipe, but that helps us protect this from driving over it multiple times and not having it deteriorate. You guys were asking what kind of pipe this is, you know? I don't know the technical name, it's a black poly pipe. It comes in rolls of anywhere from three quarters of an inch up to like three inches. And it is made to be outdoors very very resilient it can be buried and uh, or you can run it above ground like this we have just run it in a key spot down one fence line and we have it close to the fence line we don't want the animals stepping on it there's a valve there i'll get to one of those in a minute and show you but i just want you to see it is just right down this fence line we've got it tied off in a few places that is just one line and this is to a central area and you can kind of see we've got some areas up here and we've got some areas out there pretty simple this gives us a key line to run water off of and it will go down to the end of that fence down there here is the valve system i wanted to be able to run 100 foot of hose you know out into the pasture so that when we're moving chicken tractors and sheep shaws and animal waters around. We're not hauling water, we can just drag the hose over during the season that we're out here. And so we've got a valve on this line, every 200 foot, 180 foot. Because we're gonna get surprise freezes and different things happen, we've gone with all brass fittings. It's definitely a bit more expensive, but it's a bit tougher and it takes uh, some of those freezes a little bit better. You can definitely go with a plastic system, you know, plastic fittings with this poly pipe. They make them, they're a lot less expensive. And then, you know, a valve, most of your valves are gonna be brass. And, uh, but you can eliminate the brass everywhere else if you want. And if you're not in a zone that freezes, I'd highly recommend that. That's great. 
that's gonna save you some dollars. You can also go up to some kind of galvanized parts would be the next step up. It's better than plastic, but it's I found it's not as good as this brass. This is one inch line. It's not made to handle a ton of volume, but we can run a couple of three quarter hoses off of it just fine because there's usually a couple people out here doing chores and we don't want one guy to have to wait for another guy to do water. You've got to just design these things to what works for you. In a system like this, it's really valuable to th just think about locations, centrality. You got to take the time, map it out. Think about your going back and forth. Think about the work you're going to do and figure out a system that works for you. And, you know, we talk about expense and not having money. And I, I mentioned in the last video that I waited a long time because there's been times when, you know, I didn't have funds. But, I mean, we've usually got funds. It's where we allocate them. It's what we do. We're usually saving, right? You're thrifty on a homestead. You've usually got projects. So it's just figuring out where to allocate those funds. This just got us water to two and a half acres that we can use intensively. It's made us a lot more efficient and it cost a few hundred dollars. This wasn't that expensive when I look at how much time it's saving us already. The work is more enjoyable. It's just better. It is just better. That's this water system. Again, you can do a ton of iterations on this. We do need to get some water to some other places. We'll come back to this gate. And what eventually is gonna happen is we'll split right here and we'll run a pipe down this fence line. Because if you see our other one is over here, it's gonna get hard to get water way out there you know, past those chickens, it's gonna be more than 200 feet. And so we're gonna want a line down here. And we're gonna do a more central line here that's larger. Lane, how you doing, buddy? Good. All right, you getting your chores done? Yeah. Good, you got the chickens all fed? Mm -hmm. Yep. And we have water and chickens. Good job. Are you checking in or do you have some chores to do out here somewhere? Uh, I was checking in. You're checking in. All right, you wanna say hi to everybody? Say hi. You can wave. All right, that's Lane, he's a good guy. He, he's, a, he's a chicken man right now. He takes care of the egg layers and then helps Tristan out what, with waters out here in the pasture, right? Yeah. So you liking having this hose system out here? It's kind of hard. It's kind of hard? Yeah, because I have to stretch the hose out all the way to the sheep. Wow, he's not selling very good for me right now. But what Lane didn't experience is when we were having to haul the water out here with five gallon buckets. Thanks for helping us out here. See ya. Bye. What we will end up doing is the next, you're okay, you can close the gate. As a next iteration is adding a main line in here, probably three inch line uh, that we can also run some hoses off, but that we can also run the new sprinkler off of. And I'm gonna go talk about that because you guys were asking about it. You know something I want to note right here? We're, we're working on improving, improving pasture. So before I talk about the sprinkler right here, I want to note the difference of this area right here. Wow, look at that. And that area over there. Now, all of this is ground we've been working to improve, but there's a big, big difference. And I'm pointing this out because somebody made a comment about the chickens and they were worried about running the chickens over the land and that even by moving them, it was gonna deteriorate the ground and it was gonna get hard and compacted and we'd need to till it. And it's, it's actually the exact opposite happens. This right here was very, very thin pasture two years ago. This is the second season of running uh, chicken tractors on here. And uh, this year we ran sheep ahead of the chickens, but that's it, it's had nothing else on it. And just look at that, that's, that's coming back. Compared to the other side of the fence, where um, we've not gotten them up there. The chicken tractors aren't gonna do good on this hillside. And right now we've just got the uh, dairy cow out there using this land and there's some good forage and we're getting some organic matter built up. But look at the difference. This is, this is just the chickens. This is just the chickens doing their job uh, spreading manure out here and it works. Coming back to water, that's what this video is about, right? Another part of the system that we've just improved because while we have 40 acres, we are utilizing about five. And uh, we've got a few beef cows out on some of the other land, but most of what we're doing is happening all out here 
uh, around the house. And that's how I like it. Things are close to home. We can do most of the work. We're not driving to the other side of the 40 to move chicken tractors around. One of the things that we also did this year, especially after being with Joel and some of those guys, they live over on the East Coast. They don't need a lot of water. They've got a lot of rain. We do pretty good a lot of the year, but we do have some dry periods where everything dries out really, really uh, badly and it just slows everything down. And I was really encouraged with Joel that uh, if you know, you've got water and you obviously you have to apply it to your situation and what you have and size of property and what your water resources are. But if you've got water to use it, and I've resisted that a lot, I've just like, oh, I just got to make this pasture work with what, you know, rainfall we have and what animals we have. And certainly you can do that, but we have the water and we want to distribute some of that water. And this system to answer a few of your questions, because you guys were asking, this is from Big Sprinkler, the company. You can just look up bigsprinkler.com. We're not an affiliate or anything, but I had a smaller version of this for a few years that I used here and there, but we wanted to get some water out on the property. And uh, we got this along with a gas pump. Uh, they had an all-in-one system. This one is their 1500, you can see. Okay, maybe we should be an affiliate. We're doing a little bit of advertising for you here, Big Sprinkler. But my last one that was much, much smaller than this ran great. This thing is phenomenal. It covers almost an acre and we've got pond water. We've always got water flowing into the pond because we've got springs. So this is a great resource for us. This is just a two inch hose going down to a pump at uh, one of the ponds. And I love the sprinkler. I don't love the pump so much. And I'll tell you why in just a second. Find my way through. You can see this hose, very, very durable. Oh, side thought. So for you were asking about uh, why I was worried about snow load if the chickens go into the barn during the winter. Well, the chickens go into the barn. The A-frame doesn't. Yeah, it sits out here in the snow and waits uh, for the weather to come around. It still has to deal with the snow load even though there's no chickens in it and don't wanna have to rebuild them every year. This is the pump for that big sprinkler. And I bought this in a package, again, from bigsprinkler.com. And uh, this pump certainly does the job. It is loud, 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 super loud. And I had been wanting to run it well into the evening, even overnight. I don't like to water during the day. You lose a lot of water to evaporation and we have a lot of air movement. So between the evaporation and the air movement, we could be losing as much as 50% of the water that we're putting out. And I don't want to do that. That is not a good use of water. But it's summertime, the houses are open. Nobody can sleep with this thing. So we're having to squeeze it in, in the evening hours and the morning hours. Super, super loud. Problem is an electric motor this size is super, super expensive. We're still figuring out what to do, but this thing pumps, it pumps right out of the pond right there. If you guys can see, there's a hose right there goes down, it's floating right there, and it's pulling water out of the pond. So it's, it's really very, very simple, and it's helping us make a drastic jump in the quality of our pasture and what we can do out there, and that's only gonna get better over the years. Now, if you're thinking about something like this, you just gotta size it appropriately. We've got a little bit of land, we've got quite a bit of land, we're gonna eventually move into other areas, and uh, so this is worth the cost for us. Uh, it's not for everybody. You may be able to just work with, you know, right out of the cistern. Our, our cistern and our water supply up there that I showed you in the beginning is not enough to do this kind of watering. Uh, we've got to take it out of the ponds. Um, but it is very, very valuable. And I have become, you know, a proponent of, especially where we're doing this, we're living on this. And uh, this is providing for us and our family. And honestly, one of the kids is starting to raise chickens. And so there are some businesses that are growing out of this. So. Uh, at our scale, it's worth the investment. Really, really love it. That's some of our water systems. I didn't talk a lot about the gardens, I guess, and the micro sprinkler systems. I've done that in some other videos, so we'll link to those. And if you guys have more specific questions, please let me know. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep rolling with some of these videos and uh, I'll answer some of those and we'll just continue to have some fun out here 
during the summer. It's been great hanging with you guys. See you soon.